Today's video is called A Time of Conflict, and we're going to be talking about Jefferson dealing with three foreign threats. Pirates, war, and Native Americans. So first of all, let's talk about Jefferson's presidency. His first term was very successful with the Louisiana Purchase. He wins a second term in 1804, and he's been providing strong leadership, and he's pretty much loved by the people. His second election goes very easy, much easier than the first against John Adams. However, in his second term in office, he's going to face some major foreign problems, and they're going to prove to be a little bit more difficult than what he's faced already. First of all um, is the Barbary States, and the Barbary States are located in northern Africa, in the countries of Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, and in Egypt. And these states are actually pirate states. Yes, the kind of pirates that go yar and ahoy matey and yo ho ho, etc. Um, these are pirates that steal ships and they try and make money off that. So what these pirates are doing is when ships enter this very important waterway of the Mediterranean Ocean, um, to trade with France or Italy or Greece or even in the Middle East. This uh, Mediterranean Sea, this ocean here, is um, very important. The pirates have access to that ocean and they stop ships and then steal the stuff off them to make money. They also make money because countries will pay them what's called tribute to not steal their stuff. So if you wanted to trade in this area and you didn't want the pirates to bother you, you'd have to pay them off. When the United States was part of Great Britain, um, before the Revolutionary War, the pirates wouldn't mess with Great Britain because Great Britain had the most powerful navy in the world. But when the United States gained independence, the pirates, well, they either wanted tribute or they were going to steal the boats. Washington and Adams paid the pirates tribute money to not mess with our trade ships. Jefferson, however, thinks the tribute's too expensive. He doesn't like that the pirates are pushing us around and he decides to stop paying the tribute and instead to use force. He sends the, the Navy out to this area and tries to use force to stop the pirate attacks. That does not go so well at first, however. You can see in this picture here, there's a famous story about one of the naval battles. There is a ship called the USS Philadelphia. It's captured by the pirates. It's a very new, high-tech, big ship. The pirates did not have this kind of technology and the pirates were going to be able to use this ship against the United States. So rather than let the pirates have it, a guy named Stephen Decatur, he sneaks in um, to Tripoli Harbor at night. He's the lieutenant. This was his ship, by the way. He takes a rowboat, rows out there, puts some explosives on board when no one's looking, blows the thing to smithereens so the pirates can't use the ship. Kind of a cool story. However, it kind of illustrates how poorly the initial battles were going for the United States in this war with the Barbary states. However, things got better. The United States actually used a land force to win this war with the Barbary states. U.S. Marines and a mercenary army march across the desert. They capture Tripoli by land, and they force the leader of the pirates to sign a deal to stop attacking U.S. ships. This does two things. First of all, it solves the pirate problem. Second of all, it gives the United States this new confidence that they can take on foreign countries and use military force to solve problems. This is the first time military force is used and the first time that United States soldiers actually fight on foreign soil. Moving along to problem two. Problem two is that in 1803, Britain and France, they go to war again. Both sides are going to try and weaken each other by stopping trade ships. Again. And again, the United States is caught in the middle. The United States wants to stay neutral, stay out of war, but when they trade with France, England impresses their ships. When they trade with England, France impresses their ships. And to give you a little bit of information, a little fact behind it here, between 1803 and 1807, Britain is going to seize and impress over a thousand U.S. trade ships. France is going to not be quite as bad, but they are also going to seize and impress more than, eight, more than 500 U.S. trade ships. And in addition, this is basically making England and France's navy much stronger because they're able to take the sailors that are on board these trade ships and force them to serve in the navy of whatever country does the impressing. 
So Jefferson does what's, um, tries to solve this problem. He passes what's called the Embargo Act. Basically, what an, what an embargo is, is it is a cessment of any trade. So Jefferson passes the Embargo Act, stopping all trade with any country. Trade is now not allowed. This, what Jefferson hopes he's, it's going to do, is it's going to stop England and France. Um, it's going to make them suffer. England and France aren't going to have American imports, and they're going to come crawling back to the United States and beg them to lift this embargo and trade with them again. However, this plan backfires on Jefferson. England and France are not hurt by the embargo. The United States is hurt by the embargo. They're the one who suffers. In one year, American exports fall from 109 million to 25 million. That's a huge 75% decrease in export profits. And of course, you have economic crisis because of that. People, um, especially people living in the North, the traders and the Federalists, are completely outraged at Jefferson. But outrage is pretty much spread across the country on this one. Um, uh, many people actually become smugglers. They, because they can't make money off trade, they have no other way to make money, so they start illegally importing and exporting different products um, against the Embargo Act, so they're breaking the law. Congress realizes after two years that this plan is not working, it's causing hardship in the country, and they lift the embargo, they get rid of it in 1809, right as Jefferson is sort of leaving the presidency. You can see here's a cartoon um, from the time period mocking the Embargo Act. It says, oh, this cursed, oh, gram me, that's embargo backwards. This is um, what some people believe to be more evidence of Jefferson being a hypocrite because he goes against his laissez-faire beliefs. Moving on to the third and the final conflict we'll talk about today. Um, basically, what is happening out in the western United States is that after the Treaty of Greenville, many, many people are moving into the west and destroying traditional Native American hunting grounds and ways of life. The Shawnee tribe is especially hurt and two members of the Shawnee tribe known as Tecumseh and his brother, the Prophet, are going to start trying to get other Native American tribes to unite against the United States. They're thinking that one tribe cannot beat the United States by itself, but if many, many tribes, all the Native American tribes, fight together, then they will be able to win. This organization of Native American groups is causing a problem and scaring people that are living in the West. So what happens is a guy named William Henry Harrison is sent to stop Tecumseh's rebellious activities. He marches thousands of troops against Shawnee villages. He wins a major, major battle at um, Tippecanoe Creek. It's called the Battle of Tippecanoe. And this battle breaks Tecumseh, his resistance group, um, is basically crushed. Uh, there is no longer a Tecumseh resistance group after the Battle of Tippecanoe. So Harrison's victory basically stops this Native American uprising before it really gets started. Tecumseh, however, will continue to fight against the United States. He hates the U.S. He's going to fight on the side of England in the War of 1812, but again, the resistance group is forever broken. So to recap, Jefferson's second term in office had some pretty severe foreign relations problems that he had to try and solve. First of all, the pirates in the Barbary states. Um, he used Jefferson used force, and the pirate problem was solved, and it really showed that America is starting to grow and become a, a foreign power where it can use a naval force and a military force to get a problem solved. The second problem with England and France, that one was pretty bad for Jefferson. He made an attempt to solve this problem by using by passing the Embargo Act, but as you saw, the Embargo Act was an epic failure, and Europe is going to continue to bully the United States. The third pro problem with Native Americans, that one was much more successful. Um, General William Henry Harrison defeats Native American resistance led by Tecumseh, and he helps keep the Western settlement growing at rapid speeds. Harrison, by the way, will become the ninth president of the United States, and he uses his victory at Tippecanoe to help propel him to the presidency. Well, that's all for today, and we'll look at these issues a little bit more in class this week.